Hello everybody, I'm the Hamford Hero Game Channel, and welcome back to the New Order, the last days of Europe, and to my Italian Empire playthrough, we're in the last episode. We, uh, we only got to February. <laughs> we only got to February. Mainly because every focus right now has only taken one day, and there has been a lot of reading. A lot of reading. Which I do apologise for, but I am going to do it for TNO specifically, just because of all the, the lore and information that is in each and every event. Um, anyways... Our success with Japan. An Italian ship sails into port of Tokyo, and its decks are hundreds of containers, some carrying the goods that are famously Italian. Wine, motor scooters, it would have been better if they said Vespas, uh, the like. And others, machine parts and grain, only a few hundred metres away, barrels of oil are piped out of Italian tankers. Italian oil is from North Africa. Now fuels the Japanese army from Manchuria to Bengal, offsetting the need to exploit relatively limited sphere reserves. But success does not stop here. No, it goes far further. Italian ties and suits fly off the shelf and Mitsukisho, Kusi, Mitsukoshi, maybe, department stores. Italian cinema dominates Japanese theatres and Italian fever has seemed to have swept Japan. It certainly will not last, but it still proves just how quickly our new friendship has come together. Still, the most important effect of our new success is the cash that returns to Italy to Italian artisans and Italian manufacturers. This new cash will help to re... Uh, in the rejuvenation of our economy will help propel us into an Italian century. Up until the oil crisis, anyways. With our new film partnership with Japan, our diplomats there, spearheaded by industrialist and, uh, and ambassador Ettore Conte, have proposed the creation of a permanent Italian economic delegation in Tokyo. This delegation will be led by a board of Italian businessmen and finance representatives that will act as our beachhead in Japanese commerce and finance, keeping ties with representatives of Japan government and of the various Zaibatsu, uh, allowing us to, us to tie our economy even closer to that of the Cobra Spirit Sphere. Tokyo and Rome are on opposite sides of the globe, but they'll never, they've never been so so close. Italian diplomats sent to Tokyo. The impacts of this endeavor won't immediately be apparent. Okay, that that's that's cool. Uh, that's fine. Still, we're still doing that. We're evaluating leadership for that. Um, do I want to improve? Prospect in Croatia. Right, right, right. Let's have a look at Influence Albania. Small reserve discovered. No further prospecting available. Is this to do with oil? Ah, it is. It is indeed. Let's finish off work in Libya. Right, Italian delegation sent to Tokyo. At a newly constructed building in the Bonkyo, Bonkyo yard of Tokyo, the Italian economic delegation has finally set up shop. In combination of the new trade deals recently undertook by Italy with Japan, the delegation will serve as a board of businessmen and just keeping contacts and renewing deals with the Japanese Aibatsu and Keretsus. I've probably said that wrong. Much to the advantage of, um, of uh, Italian businessmen selling and buying in the area. Representatives from ENI, Olivetti, Finn Meccana, and even relatively minor ones like Ferrari, Ferrari's minor, will now have a direct link with the Far East allowing the Italian government to reap the benefits of the trans-oceanic trade. Gumpai! Right, nice. Uh, potential India. Let's go ahead and remind the king. Let's go ahead and do that. Cato meets with Umberto II. His Imperial and Royal Majesty, Umberto II, by the grace of God and the will of the nation, King of Italy and Albania, Emperor of Ethiopia, First Marshal of the Empire, is a man with numerous grandiose titles, but little real weight in politics. Italian kings have really direct play meddled with the kingdom's political troubles, and Umberto II is no exception. Instead of preferring to act as a symbolic figurehead, however, the Verona Congress now appearing on the horizon, it would be wise to involve the king in the drawing up emergency and fallback plans in case something in Verona goes horribly wrong. We expect the Congress to proceed in an orderly and calm fashion. Perhaps one can never be too cautious. That is good. The Great Bulgarian Game! We already know about the Bulgarian Game, but you can bet your ass I'm going to beat the Germans. We're already sitting on eight. That's a nice start, possibly. Do we have a one to two? Ooh. Oh, we could risk it for a chalky biscuit. We'll see what ha happens with the Germans first. Today, His Excellency, the Duce and Prime Minister of Italy, uh, um, Galezo Gano, has met with Royal Highness King Umberto II and the latter's Roman residence, the Plazio del Carenal. Carenal? The talks between the two have been largely kept secret from the media, but many speculate that Gano is trying to seek the king's support in the political schemes. What's particularly attractive for the media is the upcoming Verona Congress. 
scheduled to take place a few months from now. The two are natural political allies, so many of the hardline fascists opposed to Kano's reforms are also for the abolish, abolition of the, uh, the monarchy. Rather, The first National Congress, the PNF, during Kano's reign as Deus, uh, the Congress will take place at the Venetian city, famed as the setting of Romeo and Juliet. Like in the Shakespearean tragedy, Verona will be the battlefield of two angry opposing factions, with Carlo Scorza growing ever more powerful and respected Italy's political apparatus, and the loyalty of the army in black shirts uncertain. It can only be hoped that the senseless tragedy uh, pretended by the play will not come to pass. King Umberto is well known for his shyness regarding politics, so it's hard to predict what actions he will take, if any at all. However, with a political storm likely approaching on the horizon, many look towards the crown as a stabilizing factor, one which the nation hopefully won't need. At a time when many had written off the whims and wants of the monarchs as relics of a long-forgotten age, it seems that royalty still has little kick in it, left in it. Long live the king! Um, let's let's go ahead and speak to the council. When the ranks of the Grand Council, one can find an image of a varied and often contradictory components and interest groups that make up the fascist state. Blackshirt generals, fascist trade unionists, old-time politicians, jurists, bureaucrats, scholars, and many more. This somewhat colourful assemble of characters, uniforms, medals, and suits must be reined in and convinced that the deuce is working for all of them. Pleasing everyone is impossible, but there are surely many among the council that could be swayed to the Kano's, uh, to Kano's side. Therefore, Shethang has ranks in politically isolating Scorza. Yeah, stuff Scorza, man. Ah, nice wee drink of water, because I'm doing lots of reading. Um, Kano has once again taken the floor before the Grand Consiglio, this time directly attacking factionalism and divisions inside the PNF. While never mentioned explicitly, it is clear, very, rather clear that his address was aimed at Carlo Scorza and his ever-growing faction of opposers to the Deus. Immediately the situation became somewhat tense as Scorza and his men were visibly distressed. Many observers, both international and Italian, have started to speculate that the Verona Congress, meant to happen in the near future, will be more than just a regular general congress of the PNF, but actually the occasion when the two factions that are starting to form in the party will finally clash. And your enemy... Oh, yes, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Keep your friends close was a, an event which possibly could have been from the secret committee, actually. Uh, numerous restrictions and oppressive measures that we have placed upon numerous subjects in the Empire were born out of emergency. Now that our hold over the Mediterranean is firm, we can start moving towards granting greater autonomy and freedom to our vassals of the Balkans, the Middle East, Africa. We will still maintain our sphere of influence, but without the need of violence or threats. Italy shall be the first among equals in the community of nations, all sharing the common goal of building peace in Europe and protection against the brutality of the German boots. Good. Good. Now, one thing we've not actually looked at is field marshals and generals. Uh, Andre Viglione, who is actually not completely useless, which is good. Kino argues for the liberalization of the empire. A victory has been scored by the Deuce, as newspapers, media outlets enthusiastically report about Kano's speech before the Grand Council. With fiery words, Roman reminiscences, and rhetorical bombast, the Deuce argued for a new policy towards the numerous Italian puppet states and allies in our sphere. From Algeria to Arabia, Epirus to Ethiopia, the grand plan includes granting more autonomy to subject states, gradually disengaging the Italian armed forces from the empire instead of relying on native troops, and finally integrating the economies of the sphere to turn the empire into a community in which Italy is a primus inter pares in true Roman fashion. The council's reaction was mixed, split between thunderous applause and barely concealed rumbling as the radicals win the PNF accused Kano of betraying the principles of autarky and corporatism from which fashion rose. Such objections, however, fell on deaf ears as many within the PNF looked forward to the benefits of a new imperial policy and perhaps reap some of them, them from themselves. Everyone wins, it seems. Right, let's go ahead and finish off this little bit of the tree, this side, and then we can finish those off. Since the 19th century, a foreign and colonial policy has always had an eastern direction with our two earliest colonies, Somalia and Eritrea, located on the shores of the Indian Ocean and the Red Sea respectively. Therefore, it is only natural that we seek closer trade deals in relationship with India, as this won't only allow us to find new profitable markets to sell our products to, but also reinforce our geopolitical presence in the Indian Ocean. Now that's Giovanni De Lorenzo. He's not terrible, but he doesn't have a face. Oh, he does. Uh, Alberto Ligobe. Is there any names we will actually recognize?
A lot of Giuseppe's. A lot of Giuseppe's. Jeez. A lot more generals than what they actually had in World War II. Okay, that's fine. Anyways, after Alantropa and the collapse of our relations with Germany, the, uh, the Italian Empire was left starved for trade. While well, the formation of the Triumvirate has um, ameliorated, ameliorated? I don't know if I've said that right, these issues to an extent more trade relations with other countries can't hurt our country. To this end, our diplomats have entered talks recently with the Republic of India, a natural trade partner in the Indian Ocean, in an attempt to increase trade between our two nations. Seems our efforts have borne fruit, as the Indian government has agreed to sign a trade agreement between our two great nations, which will surely improve our trade issues, and are stepping the long road towards economic recovery. Democracy can work? Despite only having recently gained its independence from the British oppressors, India appears to be a relatively stable and rapidly growing state. Some in Italy say that this happened in spite of its democratic and popular government, but many are starting to think that India's newfound prosperity and stability is actually the result of well-managed democracy. As goods and people pass through our Indian Ocean ports in ever, ever greater quantities, ideas have started to pass through as well, and having a friendly, powerful democratic ally will surely do no good for the fascist cause in Italy. Yes, let's deal with the fascists. So yeah, our generals aren't actually looking too bad. Uh, of course, we do have like politically connected and like war hero in them or old guard. Yeah, I'm not too bothered with that because he's still he's still decent enough for us. Pure martial wise, pretty good as well. They're old, but you know that's to be expected. Italy and India have never been particularly close. An isolation reinforced by distance in the post politics. Still, in some ways, India is not too distant from us. They are a second-rate power, with few friends and many enemies. Despite this, we have both stood tall in a hostile world. We are not as powerful as the Reich or Japan, but we are still a force to be reckoned with. We are much to the um, chagrin of the many fascists here in Italy. They are not fascists. The intellectual basis for the continuation of the fascist regime is that a relatively isolated power such as ourselves can only stay alive through a strong ordered nation. Casting away pretensions such as individualism and democracy are det as detrimental to the ultimate goal. India, as a contrast, in contrast, holds free elections, lacks a corporatist economy, and is not culturally constructed around a staunch sense of nationalism. Yet somehow they are powerful, and Nehru's government is quite stable, on par with us and on par with the world. How could this be? Perhaps men are not tired of liberty. Open up the Indian Ocean. Many of the archaic and archaic, sorry, and protectionist uh, restrictions put in place in the foreign trade before World War Two are still present. There are hindrances to profit and commerce in the Indian Ocean. By creating new bureaucratic and legal frameworks to allow freer commerce and movement of goods and people in the Indian Ocean, as well as further investing into infrastructure, we can turn our eastern ports, such as Ma Mogadiscio, Dubai and Assab, into international maritime trade hubs that will make our vast empire even more profitable. Good. Uh, Dala Chisi requests emergency powers. The Italian Middle East has often been described as a powder keg of ethnic and religious divides. An increasingly precarious house of cards, balancing between... Oh, piss. Oh, it's fine. We're winning. <laughs> um, an increasingly... Oh, yep. In response... I got that from cards. That made me think of that. In response to the increased tensions in the region, Governor General Dalla Chisa has sent the Italian government to request for sweeping emergency powers to keep the peace. This would include a power to con uh, conduct summary trials and rule by decree. Under a more ambitious general, this might be a cause for alarm. However, Signor Dalla Chisa is generally known as a conciliatory man loath to resort to such drastic strong arm tactics. Someone like him asks for emergency powers, we safely assume that the situation in the region must have turned dire enough to warrant them. Yeah, we'll we'll give we'll we'll do up our commitment to them. We'll up it. It's in here. Actually, no. It's not in there. Ah, with the Triumvirate founder, and it's going to blow up anyways. Very soon. That's why I actually paused. Right, Chairman Matei, out from Windows ENN, uh, ENI's headquarters, building Dubai, a modern shiny building made of glass and steel, but still somewhat influenced by the rationalist style, typical fascist architecture. From his office he could enjoy an eagle eyes, eagle's view rather, over Dubai's port, and there he saw a large ship from which many men, not too dissimilar, from ants at this distance. So he disembarked one by one. The ship, the first ship of workers from India had arrived. Dubai's a strange place, 
envisioned by the fascist leadership as a shining city in the desert, built as a pet project to rival Elantropa, it rapidly became a fiefdom of ENI when staggering amounts of oil were discovered in the area. Fueled by the oil fever, Dubai kept growing and expanding oil and naval industries are ever thirsty for more manpower. Thanks to our new trade deals with Italy and, uh, between Italy and India, new and marvellous opportunities of profit will be re realised in Dubai, much to the benefit of both our great nations. Gentlemen, welcome to Dubai. Right, in 40 years Italy has gone far, from a nation threatened by poverty and Bolshevism to a glorious victory in the World War, from a weak nation almost destroyed by the First World War into one of the globe's major powers. For better or worse, fascism transformed our nation, turned it into what it is now. Names of Mussolini and the other great men of the regime will forever be consigned to the history books as the creators and leaders of this brave new era. However, fascism's legacy is complex, and while some feel that the conquests of the fascist revolution have not gone far enough in creating a new order, many more believe that the fascist era has entered its final years. None can tell if this 14th anniversary of the March of Rome, 40th, I can't read, March of Rome marks the beginning or of the end, or simply the end of the beginning. Ooh. Right, 55 days until we finish that. 693 for that. We could fund the project. Let's let's hit up with a wee bit of funding. 40 years. That is how long it takes to build an empire. 40 years. That is how long it takes for a nation to turn from a second tier country into a global power spanning over three continents, including several nations under her protective watch. The Italian eagle has spread her wings over the Mediterranean and risen over her enemies, defeating the British line and reclaiming its Roman heritage. The troops paraded in Rome to celebrate the start of this ascent to imperial glory. The march on Rome taking place in 1922, exactly 40 years ago, men of the MVSN paraded among the 40 imperiali, painting the Roman streets black with their uniforms. Tanks of the Regio Esercito rolled into the streets. Demonstrations of the might of the new legions. The Regia Marina paraded with Junio Valerio Borgos and the ex -mas at his head. As the crowds cheered the hero of Gibraltar and Alexandria, finally the acrobatic team of Regia um, Ordinatica, the Ferenc Tricolori, painted the, the skies of Rome green, white and red as the people below looked in awe. And after it was all done, one by one the families who came to see the soldier parade but all went home. When the fanfare ended, the politicians left the stage and the troops returned to the barracks. Silence returned to the skies of Rome as the moon illuminated the now empty Forti Imperiali and the Colosseum. The display of might is always reassuring, but sometimes it hides the true reality of things. With the sense spreading among the population, violent divisions emerging in the PNF, and the colonial empire becoming more and more unstable and troubled, the future of Italy and of all Europe hangs in the balance. In the middle of the night, one man is still awake in the Palazzo Chigi. A pile of documents sits on the Deuce's desk. Reports from ever more worried colonial governors, letters from members of the PNF, uh, Obliquelli, I don't know, criticise him and communicates from foreign leaders. Slaved in empty promises and vague words. However, in his in the silence of the night, uh, Kano was reading something else. A novel titled The Leopard, published a few years ago by a Sicilian author. And one quote strikes him particularly. Things change so that they can stay they can stay the same. Okay, anyways, prepare for the Malta conference. Mediterranean, the Mediterranean is our sea, mere nostrum. At least that's what fascist propaganda tells us, as it always, reality is a bit more complex than that. Our relationship with the other major nations in the area has been regulated by the accord and treaties set up together with the so-called Triumvirate, an alliance reuniting three major nations in the region, Italy, Iberia and Turkey. However, increasing issues over the different spheres of influence in Algeria, the Middle East and other such problems are threatening the stability of this alliance. A conference in Malta, the centre of the Mediterranean Sea, will surely help reinforce the bonds between us and our loyal allies. Uh, no, no it won't. It will initially, but then... Um, yeah, goodbye to the, the triumvirate. So, okay, we'll have the OFN later on anyways. America, let's be friends. Make contact with the Father Front. Wait, where the hell's that? Oh, that's not over yet. Right, anyways, send out the invitations. La Valletta, reclaimed in World War II from the British, who were squatting there since Napoleon's time, and finally reunited with Italy, has never looked as beautiful as it does now. The flags of Italy, Iberia, Turkey, and smaller nations of the tribe Invite wave in the wind, and the hot Mediterranean sun kisses the rooftops and bell towers of the city as ships come and go from its harbour. The only thing left to do now is to send out the formal inv invitations, invitations to the politicians, diplomats, and dignitaries that will arrive from all over the Mediterranean to Cavina and Malta, 
where hopefully a future of peace and shared prosperity for all of our nations can be built. Yeah, that's not going to go how we are. Yeah, we would expect it to go. In fact, it's going to just cause things to blow up. Okay, nothing initially happening. Ah, here we go. Triumvirate teeters on the edge of collapse and every power knows it. Border disputes that have existed for decades have been elevated to skirmishes as land borders have been created with creation of Allantropa. Trade is in shambles, the economy is spiralling down, and nobody wants to get along with each other. One final time to save Triumvirate, Kino has decided on calling meeting. If he does not do the impossible and pull the alliance from the ashes, then perhaps you will at least end it peacefully. Of course, the location of the conference and the scale of this one is of paramount importance. The Deus Kino has a, had a private meeting with his adversary, uh, adversary and the party secretary, Scorza. This would have to be a mutual agreement. He would not have his own party spoiling the festives, festivities by making a stink back home or whatever unlucky place was chosen for the conference. Question though reigned though, where would it be held? Rome would do as the two other powers had already attacked Italy for seeing it as the centre of the alliance. Nor would Madrid or Ankara. Kino was not given Franco, Salazar or the Turks the liberty of having home ground nor would he allow themselves to recede as a centre of triumvirate. As he sat on the couch drinking a glass of wine, his absent mind mindedly checked the label, deep in thought. Maltese wine, his favourite. Wait, Malta! Oh my gosh. What a wee little... How's... Oh, what's the word? Can't think. Uh, it was perfect, on home turf, but was not ob obnoxiously so. Rich, stable, and most importantly, no border disputes. There was the Mediterranean out of every window, glistening through everything and it survived delicious food an ethnically diverse population that managed to coexist the perfect example scores i wouldn't like it of course but that was a moot point scores i wanted to show off the pride of fascism rome i'm a pragmatist he thought to himself probably the illustrious orberge de castile malta has been chosen as a, and prepared as a site for the upcoming conference it was kano's favorite place to rest whenever he departed malta surely his counterparts in our view in turkey would be swept up in the extravagance of the hotel Okay, let's invite the boys. I, I don't have much hope for this. Finish up working Q8. Let's go ahead and start doing that as well now. Ah, fading fascism. It's falling away. It's falling away. Kino gives the opening speech. Over the past few days, the delegates from around the Triumvirate have arrived. Tensions are high, and many attendees aren't exactly sure what the purpose of the conference is. Those questions, however, are said to be answered by Deus uh, Galizo Gano. Takes the stage. Honored delegates, he begins, we have gathered here today to put aside our differences and reaffirm the greatness of our alliance. I know many of you have dis uh, disputes and issues to raise, and this is the place to do it. Many audiences are shocked by the bluntness of his words, but there are a few smiles. At least he recognises this is going to be a complete shit show, murmurs one of the Turkish diplomat to another. Triumvirate was, was forged in fire, Kino continues. And as the world falls back into chaos, we must be open and frank with another if our alliance is to survive. We are like brothers, squabbling sometimes, but always united in purpose and bound by familial love and common history, Kino finished. I now invite my brother from Turkey to take the stage. And this is when the conference is going to go uh, down the swanee. Wait, where even is Malta? Malta's now part of... Malta's now part of Sicily. Of course it is. As Kino steps down from stage, Turkish Basbuk al Parlsland Turkes walks forward, and while the Turkish delegation responds with uh, raucous applause, the rest of the others is rather meeted. I will not bore you with the bland presentation like the Deus. Uh, Turks halting Italian is overcome by the directness of his word. Kino is right in what we are when he brings up our shared history. We have a history of disputed borders, he roars. The Turkish delegation responds with shouts and cheers, while the rest of the conference looks on uh, sullenly. Many have expected such a response, which few were prepared for the directness of Basbuk's words. I am not opposed to triumvirate in and of itself. The collective security is offers is a blessing in the tumult, uh, tumultuous world. But if Turkey is to continue to remain a member, we must have our ancestral lands back. We are fed up with the European domination of our sphere of influence. I look forward to meeting with the leaders of our alliance to discuss our disputed claims and to return them to the rightful motherland, Turkey. The Turkish delegation practically leap from their seats, slamming their feet on the ground and cheering. Where is some? Yeah, because we're actually get these boys are actually going to get invaded. 
Which is not happening, Turkey. Ain't gonna, ain't gonna flash, son. Massive bombardment. Aha! Yeah, someone told me about the doctrines. Like, some of them you can actually grab all of, and it looks like you can do that. But now that I know that is the case, let me grow in, go in here, not grow, go in here and improve the infantry equipment. Are the Germans just given up here? Franco and Salazar speech. After a dangerously inflammatory speech, it was time for the two uh, Cadillas of Iberia to take the stage. Two walked together, rumbling shoulders in their attempts to follow formal protocol. Salazar spoke first. Honoured leaders, he began. We wish to see a triumvirate remain united, just like our friend and ally, Basbuk Turquez, and just like him, we have disputes of our own to solve. To solve, to solve. Franco picked up here. However, unlike him, we will not resort to threats and nationalist agitation. We seek a truly equal agreement of all parties of the triumvirate. This was met by jeers and heckling from some in the audience. We are all equal partners in this great alliance. Remember, for whatever reason you are here, this is one issue most important than all the rest. Preservation of our Mediterranean Brotherhood, one are united. The two awkwardly took turns speaking for around half an hour, and while they were met with polite applause from the audience, a fair few had dozed off by the time they had finished. When is this going to end? Franco! It's not boring us with all the details, man. Mmm. The only land was hardly tranquil in the best of times, and it's quite clear that these are not the best of times. Fines between Jewish paramilitaries and Arab nationalists have intensified in recent months, but a number of violent incidents in the rise. Garrison struggles to keep the peace as the local population cra clashes with both each other and the Italian army. The administration is under increasing pressure to contain the situation with demands and requests coming directly from the colonial office. Immediate action must be taken to rectify the situation and restore order to the land before things get out of hand. Yeah, let's just go straight in. So how do we know? How do we know our? An open up canal conference. A major point of contention among the delegates of Suez Canal. Transfer to Italian control following their victory in Egypt. They have held sole authority over transit over the canal since then. Forcing our triumvirate members to pay dues, just like any other country outside the Allies. Very especially has long awaited access to the canal, as they lack the growing presence of Turkey in the region. Italian Iberian delegates, will, uh, with observers from the other tribe of member nations, have gathered an opulent ballroom to discuss access to the canal. Let us begin. Gosh, I thought this was just an easy conference. Is there a way to save it? Like the faction from breaking? I doubt it. Yeah, improved anti tank. That is a very interesting anti tank weapon. It looks like it's got a fucking shotgun underneath it. I like. Help my imposter. Help the imposed. Oh god. Whatever that is. Another day, another shift for many soldiers and sailors stationed in the many military installations in Suez. The Egyptian sun is as ruthless as it always was, but in recent times something has changed indeed. More and more ships pass through the canal with each passing day. Japan, India, China, Australia, Thailand. Suez is turning more and more into a true battle of languages and races, all passing through under the watchful eye of the Regina Marina. Since the creation of Alain Tropa, Suez became the, the juggler vein of the Italian Empire, and the one passion that connects the Mediterranean with the rest of the world's waters. Italy's monopoly over it is a vital asset for the Empire, and thus should be no surprise that the place is one of the most heavily fortified regions in the world. Dotted with military installations, bunkers, outposts, and fortifications. Losing Suez is synopsis with losing the empire and everyone of some importance in Italy's government knows that perfectly. It's not that heavily flippin' fortified. The first negotiation session, Iberian Democrat Fernando Maria Castellia Mies demanded Iberia had equal access to the canal. The operation continued for hours until finally the Spaniard slammed his heart. You've held the canal for too damn long, he yelled. Why the hell should we, your ally, be forced to pay to use it? We'll, we'll even give you a one-time lump sum of aid money if it gives us unlimited access. That's my final offer. You take it or leave it. We can come We can come to an agreement with the Spanish. I mean, the Iberian Union. We, we, can, we can come together and accept that. A nice wee lump sum. It doesn't make sense for an ally to have to pay to go through. Okay. Because we don't have to pay them to go through the Gibraltar, surely. The Gibraltar Strait. Gino replies, Gentlemen, let's be civil here. I'm not sure if I'm willing to take the trade. 
pay that trade, but perhaps we can come to another agreement. Uh, the Iberian delegation nods warily. Kano and the other Italian delegates quickly leave the room, quietly whispering while the Iberians deliver among themselves. And Silas goes, just give them access. Then the only issue we've got to solve is Algeria. And Turkey, Turkey can just get in the bin. Okay, they rejoin a few hours later. What about Algeria? We'll take it, and that's a little insurrection of your hands if we just forget this whole dispute. Your colonial forces are overextended, but you know it. That may be a little too much. No, Algeria's ours. You're not having Algeria. Oh yes, we won, but we're not going to win this one. One to three. Lobby for Amnesty. Come on, baby. Give me the three. Actually, even give me two. Just don't give me a one. Don't even want to draw with them. Oh, Kano fires back. Ridiculous. We trust you for 20 years, and this is how you prepare us. Trying to steal our territory that we fought and bled for. Of course not. These negotiations are over. Maybe in delegates shop reply. This is outrageous. We expect to be treated as equal, not children. The Canadian by claiming they would not participate on later discussions over territory disputes, including with a saving attack on Kano. We joined you decades ago because you promised equality and freedom for, from tyranny. But now, no better than the Germans. Lording over us like some petty Reich's commissariat. We've done the we've we're done with this conference. Alright, so it is just gonna Umberto holds a banquet. Let's have the banquet today. He's invited many of the nobles still around Italy, however, quite worryingly, many of the top brasses of the military are invited. Well this is partly just a formal occasion, many people are expecting that Umberto meeting with the military is a sign of greater aspirations. Hmm. Yeah, try over it's gone. Your decks. Bureau won't attend border conference. True to the word, the Iberian delegates were nowhere to be seen this morning as the various dignitaries took their seats for the border conference. Uh, the Turkish diplomats looked relieved, but the Italian delegates shared worried glances. Kino feared the conference was collapsing around him. It is, because we're about to pee off the Turks now. <laughs> and that, boys, is how it's done. By and far the largest conflict present in the Triumvirate are the many border disputes that have sparked up in the Triumvirate between all three members. For this problem to be resolved, there will be two full days dedicated to the negotiations of the nature of these disputed territories. We then started with a noticeable lack of Iberian diplomats, stuffed them, as they informed their hosts they refused to attend it beforehand, as if they're um, holier than us all. The Basburg uh, took the podium with an oversized chart of Eastern Mediterranean falling behind, uh, behind him among the rest of the entourage. We began to explain the convoluted ancient importance of Cyprus and Rose to Turkey and the demographics of the islands, particularly with what Turks decided and described as the overwhelming majority of the ethnic pure Turks. Italian controlled islands of Rhodes and Cyprus have long been a thorn in Turkey's side, due in part to the large minority, minority of Turks, and also more importantly because of their vital strategic importance serving as inlets into the Aegean and the eastern Mediterranean. Furthermore, since the completion of Alantropa, several of these Italian islands have gained prominent land borders with the Turkish mainland, as the triumvirate um, deteriorates, and with the italo turkish relationship becoming one of thinly veiled threats and backhanded slaps to their friends and allies, Turks has become much more vocal regarding the issue of these rightfully Turkish lands being denied union with the Turkish state. Our demands are clear, we only ask for what has been ours for a millennia, were the words of Turkish on, on the proposed concessions. We will not back down, we will not fall, we will not stop until we have it, a reminder of what Turkey will surely take should demands be refused. You too? Our answer is no. Yeah, do you know what? Stuff you. I'm not even going to give you the opportunity. You can get in the bin. Get in the bin. We don't need this faction anyways. We don't need it. We don't need it. It's only a hassle anyways. Kino refuses to negotiate. We will not be bullied into giving up land, he solemnly says. We need these islands as bases. We're more than willing to give joint control over the base. Bastard, I knew it was a mistake coming here. You just want to continue your domination in the Mediterranean. Using us as pawns, I'm through with your empty promises. Predictable. Oh well, I'll we'll just invade you later, if that's even possible. Bloody business of war. Chip, dig, throw, chip, dig, throw, chip, dig, throw. The foreman watches hundreds of men labouring in pre-drawn hours, shadowed by the peaks of southern Lebanon. Oh... Yep, okay, we'll help them. I'm going to commit to all the boys. Okay, the Babs, the Basburg, uh, sat in his chair and leaned back, taking a heavy sip of his wine. You know, 
It's as well as me, Franco. Cannon's not hold, uh, folding to either of our turns. Nothing uh, penetrating the thick skull of his. All we have to do is show him we can cooperate. I'm telling you, this is how we can get to him. Franco looked disinterested and turned his gaze to Medrier. Really? And what do you suggest we cooperate on? We aren't prone to working together, if you haven't noticed. Salazar attempted the button, but Turk spoke before he could. Just open up a border conflict. You don't have to commit much. It will be large, I assure you. Help me out on this one. I guarantee you will have your back when your regime collapses. That had gained Franco's attention. All right. I'll take some of my generals on it. I can't guarantee. No, you can't guarantee anything. Not without my permission. Franco was beginning to get frustrated with his Portuguese friend, but he would not crack under pressure. You're right. Do you agree to the proposal, Salazar? Yes, let's call the generals. The secret meeting became public knowledge, though each leader refused to comment on the specifics. If there was one thing that the triumvirate could cooperate on, it was killing each other. Backstabbing traitors. Okay, so they're going to kick off a war over here and over here. End of the native rebellion, Kenya. Good news from our new colony in Kenya today. A rebellion among the natives there has been put down by a local colonial garrison. After some guerrilla raids were performed on railways in some of the barracks, our soldiers in the colony have managed to locate the resistance headquarters and have up the ringleaders. Well, there are still f a few rebels on the list. The problem, for the most part, has been dealt with. Another victory for Italia. So, wins the World Cup. Good for them. Well, the conference has been bombed. The first reports that reached Rome were sporadic and disjointed. A fire has broken out in the city of Burgu. The Turks have prepared a trap and invaded Malta. Craig's Marine were shelling the fort St. Anglio. Someone tried to shoot elders. Attempts to verify anything were, were unsuccessful. As the phone lines to the conference site were all down, some tried to formulate all this into a single narrative. It was so self-contradictory uh, that it was, a f all fr it was fruitless. All anyone could do was wait and pray for good news. Thankfully, it was a wait for only seven, seven months until it was confirmed that the deuce was alive and we returned to a row in post haste. Clear details have begun to trickle in. A bomb went off in the Fort St. Angelo, obliterating the conference room, and both the, the Basmore and Cadillo survived unscathed due to good timing. The identity of the bomber is unknown, and if it was done by any of the tribe of other member states, it's unlikely they will take responsibility. Some of have already begun pointing fingers at Iberia and Turkey, and are undoubtedly those who will accuse us. While tensions were high going into the meeting, now they're absolutely astronomical. If the bomber's goal was to sow, ca uh, sow chaos in the military, then he has succeeded beyond his wild dream. Why else dreams? Who says of a man? Could be a woman. Could, the bomber could be a woman. But that will be the final nail in the coffin for the triumvirate. It should be ending. Be in Turkey, blame Italy. Withdraw delegates. Unsurprisingly, out of all the members of the triumvirate, nobody is willing to take responsibility for the bombing. Though Italy claims he had nothing to do with the bombing, as he had zero incentive to do so, this has not stopped the BN Turkey blaming Italians for the whole fiasco. Both Iberia and Turkey have withdrawn their delegates from the conference, stating that it is clear they're not safe for them to be there. They've, they've plotted it themselves. They have plotted it themselves. Goodbye to the faction and the death of the triumvirate. For a very secure, undisclosed location in Rome, Dus Kano has announced with a heavy heart on national television that the mutual bonds of the tribe of various member states are to be dissolved, effectively, immediately. Well, he emphasised how much it was his idea and its success and deterring Jeremy warmongering. It is painfully clear that the alliance would not have been long for this world, even with the bombing. It was an inevitable, inevitable outcome for a union of nations with proud leaders, opposing goals and com uh, competing spheres and influence. No doubt the news has been met with a harmonious agreement in Madrid and Ankara, a mix of happiness, they are finally free and annoyance that they were denied the opportunity to radically quit first. But the threat of Germany still looms large in the minds of many, and there may be an hour or of need where the triumvirate will be sorely missed. But that hour is still far away, and a few will mourn the triumvirate's passing tonight. So it goes. Collapse the triumvirate. It's gone. It's gone. What a sad, sad day. Oh, we run round two. Oh, one to five. Can we get even, even luckier? We'll do that and then we'll end the episode because we are. It's gonna be a bit of a longer one today, but I thought we'll get the death of the triumvirate out of the way this episode. And then we should be able to move on to bigger and better things. Yes, like we can now. Okay, defense plans. Anyways. Status of the economy. The Italian economy has since has since Alan Tropa never been incredibly stable. The receding waters ruined our former port cities, and the only trade with our triumvirate allies, allowed the Italian 
uh, economy to remain afloat. However, with the collapse of Triumvirate, we are left in a very precarious position. The pillars, tertiary sector. Heat attrition. Oh. Don't know which one we want to go for. Right, so that's the economy's done. Seven more days for that to do. Right, so the pillars. The modern Italian economy is held by the two primary pillars, industry and agriculture. While both pillars aren't in dire state, the collapse of trade rate requires us to invest more into our domestic industry so the pillars can successfully do their job of holding up the Italian economy. We must finish modernizing agriculture and tap into the wealth of the industry that the Italian Italy holds. Of course, infrastructure will be built up even more to support the increase in amount of materials that will soon flow through Italy. Our pillars will become unshakable, but not even the strongest economic earthquake will make them fall. Construction speed for a whole year's increase. Good. That is what we like to see. Alright, how are we gonna get are we gonna get lucky? Oh we've hopped at the six. We've hopped at the six. That's for oh, Empire Management. Yeah, we'll commit to them. War in the desert. How dare you fight them? How dare you? You've got our back in though. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna leave that episode there. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I shall be back very soon for some more. Till then, take care. Cheer bye. The now.